intelligence update on Ukraine. This is Crisis Report here. And remember to subscribe and like these videos to keep these reports coming. Thanks. This is a defense intelligence, uh, this is from Defense Intelligence uh, UK as the source for this story. I'm gonna take a look at it and tell you what I think what I think about it. Winter will bring a change in the conflicts for both Russian and Ukrainian forces. Changes to daylight hours, temperature, and weather will persist or will present unique challenges for fighting soldiers. Any decision that the Russian general staff make will be in part informed by the onset of winter. Winter. Now I those who don't know have studied World War II significantly and understand um, invading Russia or just wars in Russia, winter is a hugely significant event. Um, daylight will reduce to fewer than nine hours a day compared to 15 to 16 in the height of summer. This results in fewer offensive and more strategic defensive front lines. Night vision capability is a precious commodity and further exacerbating the unwillingness to fight at night for those who don't have it, obviously. The average high temperature will drop from 13 degrees Celsius through September to November to zero through December and February. Forces lacking winter weather clothing and accommodations are likely to suffer from non-freezing cold injuries. I'm not sure what that is, non-freezing cold injuries, I don't know. I know hypothermia and whatnot, but I don't know how, why the, what they're exactly phrasing that there. Additionally, the golden hour, um, uh, yeah, where they cut window, in which to save critically wounded soldiers is reduced by approximately half, making the conflict um, with the enemy much greater, or con contact risk with much greater. The weather itself is likely to see an increase in rainfall, wind speed, snowfall. Each of these will provide additional challenges to the already low morale of Russian forces, key point, but also present problems for kit maintenance. Basic drills such as weapons cleaning must be adjusted to conditions and the risks of weapons malfunctions that increase. Right, what this means in short. The Russians are fucked. Okay, but a bit, bit more in depth. Russia has been unable to get clear um, air superiority over the battlefields. The Ukrainians are continuing to be able to do both rotary wing and fixed wing aircraft attacks. It appears that the Ukrainians have near... Um, immunity to use uh, you know drones uh, often what we would think of as improvised drone devices Russia does not have a um, countering element to those you know as in some sort of anti-aircraft or specialty electronic drone dam dri uh, drone jamming devices the U.S. used um, drone dam jamming devices, in, particularly in the war in Iraq, rather effectively. Uh, it appears Russia doesn't have these. And so tactical mobility without those, with, with, with having Ukraine able to operate drones, and identify target locations and literally drop mortar bombs straight on top of them from the drones. Being able to do this from a um, secure position nearby uh, will give a significant uh, advantage to the Ukrainians. Now, it will still be challenging for them, but they will be able to, to do so. It will also make keeping supplies flowing to troops right on the front line much more difficult, which will probably m mean bringing in 
um, picketing forces, um, screening forces into a more central location, which would allow the Ukrainians to more readily penetrate Russian lines and set up ambushes or plant um, roadside bombs or other um, just landmines or whatnot that will disrupt supply convoys, disrupt rail usage uh, throughout the winter and can have dramatic problems for the Russians. So although I don't know if we're going to see any major Ukrainian, we may, but we may not see, we may or may not see major Ukrainian offenses in the winter, but minor ones can have a crippling effect and may um, prompt the Russians to contract their forces. And I, in another video that may already be up by the time this is up, um, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at what I think the strategic situation is going to develop through for the winter from my current understanding, all subject to change with more information. But I thought this highlights the, the coming situation in that Russia is not going to be doing any significant offensives, as basically is what this is saying, um, through the winter. And springtime is the next likely opportunity. So we're seeing a, um, you know, a, a change in situation there in the war. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. When, and these reports will keep coming as I find interesting stories to present to you. So whenever the next time is, see you then.